Hello everybody and welcome back to the Ant Hollifer YouTube channel. Today we are looking at the Acromermax oxpinosus, also known as, well, one, one of my leafcutter colonies. And well, as you can see, they are doing quite well and yet they are not really doing quite well. They have quite a big problem and well, I will go into it a bit more later in the video because all in all, I'm not too satisfied with how they are doing, but luckily after doing a lot of research while making this video and talking with guys like Wakushi, I may have found part of the problem. Today, the colony looks like this. As you can see, they have built right up against the acrylic wall. This makes for some awesome shots where you can see exactly where the new fungi and the old fungi is. The new fungi is this darker color and well, the old fungi has this dead looking fungi. It's not really looking that healthy. But looking around the pot, it's quite clear that the colony is in full cutting mode. Sadly, this isn't too normal. At the moment, they only accept one kind of leaf being Japanese privet. Now this has given me multiple headaches as, well, you can see right now I'm trying to feed them two different kind of privet, the Japanese privet and the wild privet. But normally I've also given them bramble and other kinds of leaf, but they have just all died out. And that's quite annoying because, well, they only accept one leaf at the moment, being this Japanese privet. And well, sometimes they accept this other wild privet. And I think this is a big reason why they don't grow faster. They just don't really go crazy for leaves at the moment, and that is just really annoying. If we take a look at another YouTuber's colony being Ant's Hood, we can see how massive his colony's fungus is. It's completely exploded. The weird thing is, my fungi was quite a lot larger than his fungus for quite some time. But suddenly my colony stopped, and well, Ant's Hood found the perfect leaves, and his colony just exploded. Now as I have this direct comparison, I really know that something is not really right because his colony has just, it's way larger. And just all in all, it's really annoying me out. Like I said in the beginning, Wakushi may have the answer to why the fungi have died out so fast. Even though the humidity inside the pot always stays at 99%, Wakushi's trained eye immediately spotted the dry gyrosum floor and said I should water it a bit more. Now. I know that I have to water the gyrosum quite a lot, but as I have overwatered the first two times I watered the setup, I overwatered, as I have kind of figured out how I should water it. And as I overwatered them twice, I started to cut down on watering them, meaning that now I'm watering too little. The good thing is that this entire pot is a prototype pot and it's still being developed, and Wakushi have completely changed the watering part of the system, just completely removing this overwatering problem. So with the finished version of this pot, you're not able to overwater it. So it'll be and hulfer proof. So massive thank you to Wakushi for making it and hulfer proof. But yeah, I think this may be the reason why the fungi have died around the same pace as they have grown. Even though it says 99% humidity, it's just not enough. They need even more and the humidity sensor is just not sensitive enough to really show how humid it is inside. Today I've changed my watering method and is following the direction from Wakushi. Looking at the gyrosome, you can kind of see if it's like dry, and if it is a little bit dry, that's when I have to water it. Now, before I filled this entire pipe up with water, now I only fill just a little bit of the pipe with water and wait around half an hour. Then I can go back, look at the gyrosome. If it looks a little bit shiny, like a little bit wet, I know that it has the right amount of water inside. But if it still looks a little bit dry and just looks a little bit dusty, I can water it once more. Now also over here I have this trash that I deliberately haven't removed to see how quickly they have exploded in trash, which is why I have seen this problem come, because I took out the trash quite often before, but I felt like that was too much trash, and you can just see how much trash we have. Now as I have watered the setup, this trash has gone a darker color as it's been a bit more moist and wet, so that is also a sign of where I can look if the pot is too dry. So with these things in mind, I can't really do anything about the leaves except for just testing different leaves. But with the watering part of the pot completely changed in my head, 
I hope that the fungi will survive a bit longer than it is at the moment. A whole other thing is the brood situation inside the pot. I barely see any brood, and I know Ants Hood had the exact same problem and as his colony exploded, well he got to see some more brood, so goddamn Ants Hood, you are clearly doing something better than me. I'm not really that scared that we don't have enough brood because you can't really see within the chambers, you can just see the outside and well I see a few larvae but I don't really see any massive piles of brood. The good thing is as they have started building up against the acrylic wall I can often see the queen is hiding in this middle part. She was often staying right beneath the fungi but as they have built it up against the acrylic it's now often that I can see the queen. So I know she's doing well I mean I mean I don't know if she's doing well but I can see she's alive so I'm not concerned for the queen. It's just a little bit weird that I can't really see if there's a lot of brood in there. Now to change up the mood a little bit and talk about something a bit more funny. We have this worker right here showing us the daily struggle of being a leaf cutter worker. As you can see she is basically just trying to go down. But as she has just cut this leaf, the juices from within the leaf is sticking to another leaf. And she ain't having none of it. She's trying to get down and speeding it up. She's having quite a big struggle. Slowly but surely she does get down to the other leaf. But now where she's down with the other leaf, the juiciness once more come back to haunt her. It's now sticking to the other leaf once more. And as she's trying to pull this leaf she's just cut, she's suddenly also starting to pull the other leaf. Now the other workers, they are just confused. One worker is trying to cut the leaf, another worker is trying to lick the leaf, and suddenly the entire leaf is moving as this one worker is trying to get her own cut piece over towards the fungi. And all the other workers are really just not helping at all. After a while she does get it loose from this big leaf. And now it's just about getting up the fungi and trying to feed it to the fungi. Now as I tried to record this I have wanted to do some smart camera move and just simply turn the entire pot around to follow this journey of this leaf piece. But the worker said no no no, I'm way faster than you, goodbye. And I lost it. Luckily, we have another leaf we can look at. Because right now they are just going crazy with cutting right now being once I recorded this clip. Because since that day, they've only cut one tiny piece of leaf. They just completely stopped cutting again. I'm not sure if it's because they grow the fungus a lot, take a break and grow again, that is my theory. But it's just weird that they stripped a branch and right after didn't cut at all. Another thing I saw was this. I'm not really sure if it's a leaf or what is it? Let me know what you think of this down below. I have no idea what that was. And when I tried to look from the other side with the camera, it was gone. Not sure if it was a, some brood or what it was. Let me know what you think about this in the comments down below. Now although there is a lot of bad vibes in this video, there is some good news. They are starting to change their fungi to this more adult looking fungi. This is something I've seen a lot of other leafcutter colonies do. Once they grow in size, they change the fungi and how it is. In the beginning it's all of these small holes, but as you can see here we are starting to get these larger holes. And it's quite hard making a 2D video about this 3D object. So here go some different angles. But what I'm trying to say is just that they seem to be developing into this more adult looking fungi. Which for me is really amazing and it's really hyping me up. That is what Ant Hood's colony did before it exploded. All I wish for now is that this new fungi doesn't die. And this old fungi that is already looking like it's dying isn't gonna die right away. I mean there's not really that much I can do because I, I don't know what to do to be honest. It's just weird that they die so fast. But I mean, these macro shots are looking amazing. And I just love this colony. Okay, so getting back to the bit more serious part. Uh, yeah, this has been it for this video. So I hope you liked it. Let me know what you think of this with the whole are they dying, are they not dying, why are they not cutting. I mean, if you have any leaf cutters, you may know something. If you don't, well, then you can still say your opinion in the comments down below. Um, but yeah, I'm, I, I, mean, I'm, I don't really know what to feel about this whole situation. Um, I guess the only thing I can do is water them more, as I'm doing now, and just keep feeding them and see what happens. But yeah, Holofers, that has been it for this video. So don't forget to like and subscribe, 
and I will see you all in another video. Bye!